Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Alvis. Uh, my research over the last decade has moved increasingly towards identifying uh, distributed words in mainland Southeast Asia, regionally distributed ones. And this is a kind of etymological research that involves language contact, historical phonology, uh, language history broadly, and I use historical and archaeological and sometimes ethnographic information to accomplish this. So it overlaps some with human history studies as well. Um, what are the goals of my study? Uh, oops. I'm going to uh, discuss loan words that are related to material culture, words that are widespread in mainland Southeast Asia, uh, words that are in multiple language families, and words for which the earliest evidence uh, of their presence uh, in, in the region is in the first millennium of the common era. Of course, they took time to diffuse in the region, even in the second millennium, but the starting point uh, is the first millennium. So, yes. um, uh, this chronological information uh, adds points of reference to aid in further historical, phonological, and etymological research in mainland Southeast Asia. Uh, I think it contributes to understanding of language contact and ethnolinguistic history in mainland Southeast Asia. And finally, a, a goal for myself is to apply and refine this interdisciplinary approach in etymological research uh, that I've been developing over the last decade and try to make it effective, as effective as it can be. So what are some past, uh, what are some past problems uh, and difficulties? I don't wanna dwell on problems of the past, but I need to provide some context for my current findings now here in the, in the year 2024. Uh, quickly reviewing why it has long been difficult to study histories of words in mainland Southeast Asia and uh, at, among other linguistic topics. So um, uh, many language, many languages, there are many languages in a small area with lengthy intensive language contact of these language groups here. Uh, there was in the past less data, uh, less uh, lexical data, limited ability to search the data. Uh, there was less understanding of historical phonology of the key regional languages, and this you know, additional confusion leading to chance partial similarity, identif identification of word forms uh, that are, are simple word shapes, uh, less understanding of historical language contact in mainland Southeast Asia this was mostly focused on national languages, major languages, and, and uh, difficulty understanding uh, separating uh, direct from indirect borrowing, so can, uh, general uncertainty of word origins or the uh, timing uh, of transmission, and just general difficulty sorting out contradictory and or spurious claims. There are plenty of publications with, with that sort of information. Now, I have excluded, uh, oh, let's see. Okay, so there's been significant progress, uh, but it's difficult to exclude some of the past erroneous claims, and many details have remained elusive. So what's the current approach that, I, that I've been taking? Uh, using these massive lexical databases, many digitized dictionaries, uh, uh, lots of recent reconstructions for language families and branches that we just did not have 20 years ago. Uh, it's, it's, there's much more quantity of data. It's much more efficient to check these kinds of things than even just 20 years ago. So I assemble data from these uh, uh, in worksheets with comparative data. I've presented on that before. I don't have time to show samples of it. And I consider these kind of factors, the usual historical phonology, semantic features, uh, the geographic distribution, what have been considered the etymological origins of them, textual sources now, lots again, digital databases of those and uh, ethno-historical and archeological information as well. So um, I've excluded plenty of words from my talk when there's too much uncertainty. So in general, the, re the certainty relatedness of the words is medium to high. I think you'll see in some cases, I'm not able to harness AI yet to, to deal with these things for now, but I think this is still much, much faster and more effective than just 20 years ago. So, oh, and we have to check all previous claims, any, any publications from the past, we just have to check it against all of this data. We can't accept uh, previous claims, even my own. I have to check my own from the past. Okay, uh, criteria to uh, uh, determine the world's earliest, uh, sorry, the world's earliest possible occurrences in mainly Southeast Asia. I use uh, Vietnamese uh, uh, often because uh, I'm familiar with it, uh, the, the history of the uh, historical phonology of it, but these are well established and good points of, of comparison. Textual attestations are always useful, especially old Khmer. Um, 
checking the early languages, old and and uh, especially early Middle Chinese, Middle Chinese broadly, but um, uh, there's of course Sanskrit, Pali, and some uh, other uh, others as needed. But um, Dayak and late Middle Chinese, I consider those to be largely from the second millennium, or maybe the beginning of the second millennium. So that in, in itself is a kind of diagnostic that is very useful uh, for excluding say it's not from the first millennium. Ethnohistorical information, Han Dynasty expansion, of course, at the beginning of the Common Era, uh, evidence of maritime, early maritime exchange, including with India, uh, rise of the Khmer and Mon kingdoms, those kinds of things are all, all helpful. Uh, and please note the earliest occurrence of a word is only a, the starting point of it, and the history, uh, the diffusion of it uh, may have taken centuries. Okay. Okay. So uh, for this uh, pretty short presentation, I will consider these semantic fields here, and uh, I will consider these language groups here. Okay. Um, uh, these these words here, these semantic fields, they represent the spread of, of significant cultural practices, metals and, and pottery and such. Uh, and these uh, language families, I, I'm not kidding. I'm focusing on Dayak because that's what's in mainland Southeast Asia. In Austronesia, I'm focusing on Malayochamic, which is in mainland Southeast Asia. Uh, the number of words in the study, 27 is a modest number, but I think they represent significant cultural impact. So it makes these of, of interest. Um, now, for this 20 minute presentation, I cannot present all of the lexical data from dozens of languages in the worksheets. So, uh, I, and I cannot provide all of the supporting historical phonological details. I've considered these, but it's a concise means of presentation and I will provide more detail in a subsequent write-up um, just so that you know. So uh, let's take a look. This is my method of presentation of this dense information. So under forms column, you see here, I provide an approximate word form for silver in the sources, uh, I indicate that uh, I believe it to, the evidence suggests it is from Chinese. Now it's a Chinese word meaning white, okay, not silver. Um, uh, I propose that this is the way because the Bai, Mandarin Bai, the Bra form combines, or it used to combine and still can, uh, with the word metal to mean silver. Okay, so this is think a fairly, uh, you don't have to stretch this too far to, to see how that works. And in fact, in Vietnamese, both um, uh, white and yellow are kept the old Chinese forms in Vietnamese, uh, meaning uh, 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 silver and gold respectively. So there, there's this pattern, but only prop is widespread in mainland Southeast Asia. Uh, Chinese texts from the 200s mention the practice of silver for trade in the region. Um, Pra is in pre Angkorian texts, so the Chenla period. Uh, languages with these forms include Chinese, you can see over there, of course, specifically Old Chinese, seven branches of Austroasiatic, and uh, Malayic. I found this in no other, other languages uh, in the region in the databases. Uh, next, there is this Mas form, it means gold. In Sanskrit, it means unit of gold. So perhaps it's chance similarity, but I think it just, you know, it, it, it leans that way. But even if it's not, then it's a Austroasiatic, it would seem a likely Austroasiatic uh, source because of the geographic center and timing and texts. But uh, this may be more debatable, uh, but it's a widespread form nonetheless. Um, early Chinese records mention the use of gold to trade fabrics in the region. I think back to the Han Dynasty text uh, referring to the Han Dynasty. Uh, and again, old Khmer texts have this. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, next, uh, iron is uh, widespread. This tech form with the T uh, onset there. And I believe that to actually be connected to old Chinese because the middle Chinese form has a final and uh, it was borrowed first. Uh, uh, there's a, a certain form of Viet, uh, Vietnamese. It's actually Vietic. Uh, uh, should be from that period. Uh, it is an old Khmer text again from a fairly early period in the first millennium. Uh, so uh, the the Hlek form uh, from Proto Dai would appear to be uh, also from uh, Old Chinese, but it would have been that form 
which is also in mainland Southeast Asia, is actually from the second millennium because of the, the onset tells us that time. Oh, um, a couple of, of um, notes here. These are words that are most likely from the second millennium. So for people who might have thought, oh, yes, these words for gold and silver, what about those? If they came with the Dyak expansion, second millennium, iron, fleck, second millennium. Uh, okay. So uh, we have metals, uh, we have metal implements. And the first one here is plow, plowshare, uh, lingal, most likely that Indic form that's been noted in, in the literature. Um, there is, uh, again, some, uh, some evidence supporting this. It's very widespread among the languages. Uh, uh, I think this is a good indication of, uh, a, a good example of a you know, widespread, widespread one in three different uh, language families there. <clears throat> As for knife machete, this ma form, uh, in Vietnamese, uh, this is a pre-tonogenesis borrowing, considering the, the tone category. So my working hypothesis is that this actually spread in, entered Vietic, early Vietic contact with Dayak groups. Uh, but then again, this word may have spread later uh, with the Dayak expansion. Uh, a Chinese word here, the knife uh, or sword word, Dao, um, in uh, this plenty of archaeological evidence of Chinese swords starting in northern Vietnam from the Han Dynasty. Uh, the phonological features in Vietnamese indicate it is an old Chinese form with the z, the, the uh, fricative z onset. The, the T onset is more widespread. Those are would have to be from Middle Chinese uh, or potentially more recently from, from dialects. Uh, that's, that has to be worked out. The timing of this, it requires more careful sifting and checking. Okay, words for ceramics. Uh, they're also spread uh, with some impact on ceramic production. Uh, when you see something like uh, kiln, uh, the Chinese word lu uh, for... Um, now, the... But the way I view it is the Vietnam, Vietnamese has awe, awe from this U, and then Khmer also has that. This is unlike the U or O vowels in the vast majority of Chinese dialects or, or early reconstructions. So that lowered vowel uh, suggests it is the first, well, it's both the tone and the vowel that show the Vietnam, Vietnamese form to be from the first millennium. Um, but uh, there's, there's evidence of Han Dynasty ceramic production in Northern Vietnam early, but in, in Cambodia, in the, later in the first millennium, there's some evidence of, of gloss stoneware practices in, in the archaeological literature. So that uh, it's certainly provocative. Uh, next from Indic, there is this it form uh, originally with three syllables. Um, dates back to at least the first mid first millennium based on the old Khmer texts, inscriptions, uh, that is, and uh, evidence, there's evidence of, of course, of Indic and influenced architecture uh, from that period. Um, another Chinese loan for roof tile, uh, another early Chinese loan here, as archaeological support in northern Vietnam, even to the BCE period, even potentially pre Chin. Uh, this loan word has this ya off glide. That, could, that connects it to the to old Chinese as well as the tone, of course. It's not as widespread. This form is not as widespread in mainland Southeast Asia. The later uh, Middle Chinese Mua form is found in many Kredai languages in Southern China. Um, now, many words for pottery are very widespread. Uh, and I presented many more of these kinds at a previous SEALS conference. But today, of course, I'm focusing on those from the first millennium. The first form here, Chan Chan, uh, Chinese John. It's uh, uh, found in uh, 7th century old Khmer inscriptions. It has a tone in Vietnamese marking it as a first millennium word and potentially the first half of the first millennium considering the eh vowel, again, this lowered vowel, like with the ah vowel. As expected, uh, archeological finds in North Vietnam show this glazed pottery going back 2000 years. Uh, I think this loan and that kiln loan be, before is possible evidence of, of early spread of, of Chinese ceramic production in the region. It's certainly provocative. Um, so there are, there are these uh, three Chinese uh, loans in this category that can be you know, connected to the first millennium. Um, there are many more from the second millennium as well. And again, I'm not talking about those uh, for this talk. And there's an apparent Austroasiatic word, che, uh, which dates to the first millennium in texts. 
primary. It's just found in, in Austroasiatic, but it is found in Cham, so I've included it here. Um, another Austroasiatic form call here, drinking bowl. Uh, we've got early textual evidence of it, and it, I think it, it seems likely that it's spread into Southwest Dai and not the reverse, but uh, um, I think the form looks more like a, a Austroasiatic word than a uh, than a Southwest Dai one. Uh, as for Indic words, there is the bot form, Supatra, but bot, um, uh, for, you know, the spread of Buddhism from the first millennium. Uh, the Pingon word here has been posited to be a Persian word from Hindi or Tamil, but I, it's it's an old Javanese text a millennium ago, so I'm, I'm not really sure which. It's from India, via India somehow. Uh, as for this uh, tas, a metal tray or a metal tray dish or bowl, it's not ceramic, but it's still a dish of sorts, so I've included it. And it's found in the kingdoms, languages of kingdoms here only. Uh, so Khmer, Mon, Old Javanese, a kind of prestige product. Uh, I, I like to think maybe Srivijayan Kingdom might have innovated it or something like that because they were known for uh, uh, prestige products like this. Uh, clothing and material, this is labeled clothing, but it just has hats and cotton, actually. The, the Sanskrit word, karpasa, is this uh, almost undoubtedly the source of this word for cotton. There is textual, linguistic, and archaeological archeologi uh, evidence that shows cotton being brought to mainland Southeast Asia, at least in the, in the first millennium, if not earlier. Um, a, uh, a one word for the ubiquitous mainland Southeast Asian wide-rimmed hat uh, is an... A, a, it appears to be an Austroasiatic innovation. There's a single image of a kind of conical hat on a Dalm Sun bronze, so perhaps a Vietic Dalm Sun innovation. Uh, that's speculation, of course, but uh, uh, that's what the evidence looks like. Um, uh, Chinese spread this uh, other word. For, well, there's another word for conical hat from Chinese that's spread with dye expansion. In the second millennium, I'll talk about that at the workshop tomorrow. Um, uh, but this Chinese word for hat, very widespread, um, uh, general word for headwear, it is, uh, the muk form is from Old Chinese uh, in Dayak, spread via Dayak, so that means mostly after the first millennium, right? The Vietnamese form mu without the K is still from the old end of stage of Old Chinese, but with after the loss of the K, the tone category marks it as, as a uh, Old Chinese loan. So uh, that's actually the oldest one in, in mainland Southeast Asia, the move one in Vietnamese. Uh, words for transportation. Uh, regarding words for related transportation, the Anchor Kingdom had a road system, very well studied. Uh, and two rather important words here are horse and cart. And images of both are seen in bas reliefs at Anchor Wat. Uh, and they are in early epigraphs, these words. Uh, one word that is widespread, uh, duk for, for boat or canoe. I think it's you know, possible Old Khmer. It's, it's, it's in the Old Khmer texts quite early. It's not outside of mainland Southeast Asia, which means it's not likely to be a proto-Austroasiatic word. So it seems more likely uh, to be a, a, an Austroasiatic innovation, maybe Old Khmer innovation. As for cheo, for oar, paddle, uh, this word is a possible Chinese loan word. Uh, the vowel, however, is looks like what it is in Vietic, the e eh vowel. Again, that e eh vowel, and uh, it is uh, this is attested in Old Khmer pre anchor inscription. So I'm not entirely sure of the chronology, other than it entered the region somewhere in the first millennium. Oh, some other words that are uh, uh, widespread but not in the first millennium include uh, from Chinese ma, ek, and an for saddle. Um, and then there's this wrong form, but uh, that's second millennium, not for this. Okay. And the last slide here, uh, words related to trade in, broad, in a broad sense. I note these first two words for flute. The first B word uh, is in all major branches of Kradai. And whether this is a proto Kradai form, I leave it to Kradai specialists. Regardless, in mainland Southeast Asia, this should be a Dayak word that's spread with the Dayak expansion. 
I've been assuming early second millennium time of that, this, this inscription date to 962, right at the edge of that time. Uh, Joe Pityaporn has posited a timing of the expansion in the last few centuries of the Common Era. So I'll have to reconsider uh, my criteria, but I still reasonable timing for that. It doesn't have to be exactly the year 1000. Uh, the cloy form has a more Austroasiatic look, and it is uh, has a limited presence uh, in in Dayak, only Thai and Lao. So, uh, the last few forms here. Okay, so uh, the last few forms include a um, Sanskrit word jal for uh, for a fishing net, fairly widespread again, and uh, sesamum. Controversially, I will I will say Malayo Chamic. That's what to me, the data looks like a more most likely scenario for that. And Mango, uh, possibly Old Khmer, at least it's in Old Khmer texts, uh, but it's not likely from Dayak. So, okay, um, so some concluding observations. What do we see? Uh, a significant early lexical influence of Indic, Sinitic, and Old Khmer. Uh, regional trade, uh, and possibly others, but those are the, the primary ones. Regional trade, likely bilingualism to do this, uh, but still less clear context situations in this in this early period, I think is more difficult. Uh, but it looks like it, we have a foundation, right? This uh, uh, exchange and contact for a more intensive regional language contact in the second millennium. Uh, some questions that I have are, is Vietic the source of the spread of some early Chinese loanwords into Khmer? I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, at the workshop tomorrow. Uh, what is the earliest lexical indication of Dayak presence in Central ma Mainland Southeast Asia? I've touched on that topic a couple of times. Uh, what needs to be done? Well, keep checking. There's a lot more to sift through many other categories, looking at the phonology, etymology, semantic domains, see if any new uh, details come in, new hypotheses. And, and then broad, broaden this, consider this in an ethno-historical context, see how it fits in that ethno-history, how it might be changed by ethno-historical information. And how could it uh, affect ethno-historical ideas themselves, uh, that human history that I think is very interesting to, to explore and uh, a lot of inf useful information can be gained. And so thank you for your time and uh, hope you have comments or questions.